In this video, I'll run through setting up a dashboard using Homer to manage the media server that I covered in the Synology NAS Automated Media Server Setup Guide. What we'll end up with is a dashboard that looks like this. All the applications will have clickable buttons that will launch the app in a separate browser tab. They'll also have a green indicator displaying if the app is online or pingable, which turns red if it isn't. KubitTorrent will display what is currently being downloaded or seeded. Parler will display what indexers you have set up and if they're online or not. Sonar and Radar will display release dates for TV shows and movies that you've searched for in this calendar. And Plex will display what media has recently been added. And if you have a TV show or movie playing, this panel will display that information as well. For those new to Homer, it's a modern and customizable dashboard platform that can be integrated with a ton of apps beyond the media server apps we'll be setting up. They have excellent documentation, which was all I really needed to create the dashboard I just showed you, and I recommend checking it out. I'll leave a link to Homer's documentation site in the description of this video. Let's get to setting up the dashboard, and since this is going to be on the same Synology NAS as my media server, I already have Container Manager installed, which is the only prerequisite. From Container Manager, select Project and create a new project. For project name, enter Homer. Then, before moving on, open FileStation and create a Homer folder under the Docker Shared folder. You'll also need to create an app data subfolder within the Homer folder. Back in Container Manager, set the path to the Homer folder that was just created and set the source to create docker compose.yaml. Then from the homer.dev documentation site, go to the installation section, select docker, and copy the docker compose.yaml listing. Switch back to container manager and paste the docker compose.yaml file in the source text area. You'll then want to change the app data volume, removing the slash homer section to match what we've set up on the NAS. Also, check if there is an empty line and spaces at the bottom of the file, which needs to be removed, or you'll get an error when building the project. After that, click Next a couple of times, then click Done to build and start the project. If all goes well, you'll see an exit code of zero indicating that the project built successfully. Now you can bring up another browser tab and connect to your Synology NAS IP address on port 7575. This should bring up the Welcome to Homer screen where you can select either light or dark mode. And because this is a brand new install, you'll want to select Start from Scratch to continue. Next, you'll want to create an admin user by entering a username and password you'd like to use and click Create User. From this settings screen, you can enable or disable analytics and change various crawling and indexing options. Because this is a demo installation, I'll disable the Send Anonymous Analytics option, leave the rest as is, and click Continue. At this point, the initial setup is finished, and you'll want to click on the Create Your First Board option to continue. From here, click New Board and give it a name you'd like to use. I used media underscore server for my setup. Also note that I left the public option disabled because I only want authenticated users to be able to view the board if I ever enable external access to Homer. Next, we'll want to add all the media server apps to Homer, so click on Apps, then click on the New App button. We'll start with Plex, so enter Plex for name, which should fill in the icon URL for Plex automatically. Then enter in the URL for Plex, which should be the IP address of your Synology NAS 
with 32400 as the port and click Read. Next, let's add Prowler, so click New App once again. Enter Prowler for name and confirm that the icon URL is displaying the correct icon, which it is for me. Then enter in the URL for Prowler, which uses port 9696, and click Create once again. You'll want to do the same for Cubitorrent, which uses port 8090. Then add Radar, which didn't select the correct icon URL for me. If this happens to you, clear the icon URL entry, then type Radar in the text box and select the correct icon for Radar. Then enter in the Radar URL, which uses port 7878, and click Create. Lastly, add Sonar, which again selected the wrong icon URL, so I selected the correct one. Then I finished up the setup using 8989 for the sonar port. Now with all the media server apps added, you can place them on the media server board by selecting boards and click open board. From here, click on the edit mode button, then click on the toolbar menu and select add an app and add each of the media server apps to the dashboard one at a time until you've added them all. You'll then want to save the board by clicking on the edit mode button once again to save the changes. Next, let's set up integrations, which allow for Homer to interact with the various applications. We'll start with Plex, so first click on Plex to bring up its web UI in another browser tab. Then bring up either a TV show or movie listing, click on its menu, and select Get Info. From here, click on View XML, and you'll want to scroll to the end of the URL in the address bar and copy the value for the XPlex token. Once done, you can close the XML window along with the main Plex web UI, then switch back to Homer. From here, go to the admin menu, select management, and click integrations. Click on the new integration menu, scroll down and select Plex. For URL, enter in the same URL you entered earlier when setting up Plex as an app. Then paste in the XPlex token you just copied into the API key text box. Click Test Connection and Create, and if you get a success message, Plex should now be listed in the integrations list. Next, we'll set up the Prowler integration by clicking on its listing from the dashboard to bring up Prowler in another browser tab. You'll then want to click Settings, then General, and copy the API key. Next, from Homer, bring up Integrations once again. Click New Integration and select Prowler from the list. Enter in the URL for Prowler. Then paste in the API key and click Test Connection and Create. The next integration we'll set up is Qubitorrent. We don't need any information from Qubitorrent, so click on New Integration and select Qubitorrent. Enter in the Qubitorrent URL. Then enter in the username and password you set up for Qubitorrent under Secrets and click Test Connection and Create when done. We can now move on to Radar and we'll need its API key, so click on it to launch the application in another browser tab and log in. Select Settings, then General, and copy the API key. Now close Radar, then bring up integrations once again from the Homer management window. Click New Integration, 
select Radar. Enter in its URL. Paste in the API key and click Test Connection and Create to add the integration. Next, launch Sonar from the dashboard and log in. We'll need its API key as well, so click on Settings, then General, and copy the API key. Close the Sonar tab, then bring up Integrations in Homar once again. Click on New Integration, select Sonar, enter in its URL, paste in the API key, then click Test Connection and Create to add the integration. At this point, all the integrations have been added, and now we can add them to the dashboard using widgets. We'll start with Plex once again, so from the Media Server dashboard, switch to Edit Mode and add a current Media Server Streams item and a Media Releases item. For both, click on the Settings menu and select Edit Item. Then select the Plex integration and save the changes. Next, for Prowler, you'll want to add an Indexer Manager status item. Then edit the item, select Prowler from the integrations listing, and save the changes. For Qubit Torrent, you'll want to add a download client item to the dashboard. You'll then want to edit the item, select Qubit Torrent from the integrations listing, then click Save Changes. For radar and sonar, add a single calendar item. Then edit the item and add both sonar and radar from the integrations list and click Save Changes once again. Now we need to finish up the setup by organizing the apps and widgets. In the dashboard I demoed earlier, I used dynamic sections to organize the media server apps, so I'll add a new dynamic section. Then I'll resize it, drag in all the apps, and move the dynamic section into the upper left corner of the dashboard. I'll also edit the item, enter in Media Server Apps for the title, and save the changes. For the Indexer Manager widget, I'll drag it to where I had it in the demo and resize it as well. Then I'll edit the widget, click Advanced Options, Enter Prowler for the title, and save the changes. Next, I'll drag the calendar next to the Prowler Indexer widget and resize it. Then edit the widget, click Advanced Options, and for title, I'll enter Sonar and Radar, and click Save Changes. For the Download widget, I'll drag it next to the Media Server apps and resize it. Then edit the item, click Advanced Options, enter CupidTorrent for title, and save the changes. The remaining widgets are both for Plex, so I'll add another dynamic section to organize them. Then edit the dynamic section and enter Plex for the title. I'll drag it to where I'd like it to be and resize it as well. Next, I'll drag the Media Release widget into the Dynamic section and resize it to take up two-thirds of the space. Then I'll do the same for the Media Streams widget, resizing it to take up the remaining space, then save the board to complete the Media Server dashboard setup. You should now have a fully functional Media Server dashboard that allows you to launch your apps and give you an overview of the status of the apps and your media as well. Remember that you can use Homer as a dashboard platform for other apps that you may already be running. Also, if you haven't set up the automated media server that the dashboard from this video is based on, then check out the video linked here on screen. Lastly, if you'd like to support my work 
or hire me to help set up a Homer dashboard in your environment, you can contact me by checking out the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.